And joining me now in the studio is John Whitbeck. He's an international lawyer who once advised the Palestinian negotiating team in talks with Israel. Hello, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Good evening. Now, the Palestinians have recently been getting a lot of support from various parliaments across Europe, but each time it's been a non-binding motion. So what difference does one more parliament, be it the European parliament, make when it comes to something that's symbolic, really? Well, I think this vote today, um, due to a compromise that was agreed yesterday in the European Parliament, really is, is a complete non-event because the substantive first paragraph of the resolution was watered down um, to something that nobody could really object to, which means it's effectively innocuous, meaningless, and pointless. But I'll, I'll just read it because I think it's interesting. Uh, the parliament supports in principle recognition of Palestinian statehood and the two-state solution and believes these should go hand in hand with the development of peace talks which should be advanced. Now this completely finesses the fundamental question of when a Palestinian state should be uh, recognized, which is the issue in all the other uh, parliamentary votes that have been taken between those who, in my view, really want to see a two-state solution and then end in the occupation and who feel that recognizing the state of Palestine now is essential to make meaningful negotiations possible, and those who effectively favor perpetual occupation and therefore argue that recognition must await Israel's prior approval. Now, it may be a watered-down motion, um, but we haven't heard anything from the U.S., the U.S. finding itself in a situation where, of course, it's long supported. Israel, at the same time, it's under a lot of pressure from European states to do something, I suppose, to, to get the peace talks back on track. So what, what do you make of the U.S.'s position right now? Well, I think John Kerry at the moment is desperately trying to prevent America having to veto an eminently reasonable resolution in the United States because Israel has made it clear that it expects the United States to veto any resolution, even the, the much milder French resolution. We're talking about two resolutions going to the Security Council today. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure because it changes almost every hour precisely if, if two are going, if there's going to be some effort to meld them. Yet the U.S. doesn't want effectively to have the world see that the emperor has no clothes, uh, that it doesn't really support a two-state solution. It doesn't support the end of the occupation. It simply supports whatever the government of Israel wants it to do, which I'm afraid has been the attitude of my country for decades now. Now, also today, the European Court of Justice um, annulled the EU's decision to keep Hamas on a uh, terrorist uh, on a list of terrorist groups. The court said that it was a technical move, but of course, it has a political impact. Um, and the Israeli economy minister called the court's decision immoral. What's your take on that? Well, as I've read the news reports on that, it it threw it out on the basis that the original decision was not based on factual evidence is determined by competent authorities, but simply a reading of the media and the internet. Now, you can call that technical, and indeed, it's to me a little bit surprising that the European Court of Justice would even be addressing such an issue, but, but it's, it's a pretty basic technicality in saying that there's just no real basis for this. But calling anyone a terrorist is really a purely political move because there's no definition of what terrorism means. It's just an epithet you apply to people you don't like. And of course, the timing is significant. Well, well, the timing is serendipitous. I mean, the other thing interesting that just is happening today as well is that the Swiss government, uh, with fierce opposition from Israel, the United States, Canada, and Australia, uh, the habitual outlaw states, has reconvened uh, a, a conference of the high contracting parties of the Fourth Geneva Convention to consider uh, the situation in occupied Palestine. Um, and that is presumably going to reconfirm that settlements are a war crime and hopefully remind all the members who are all the states of, of uh, the United Nations who have signed up to the Geneva Conventions that it's their responsibility not to permit war crimes 
such as that to continue. We'll see precisely how the communique reads. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not sure if it's been issued it's yet. It's just a one-day conference, so, yeah, we should find out pretty soon. Thank you very much indeed, John Whitbeck, for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you.